Hey people, what's up? Um, if you're new to this channel, my name is Laura. I travel the world with my fiance Tambe, who's currently behind the screen, and we're making daily YouTube videos of our travels, and occasionally videos like this where we just talk about our travels. So basically, I'm gonna be talking about how I can afford to travel, as in how you can afford to travel. And it's gonna be in three parts, because we've been traveling for three years now, and I kind of feel like we have some good advice to tell you, hopefully. So subscribe to make sure you don't miss those other two videos. The first one today is going to be about accommodation. The second one will be about transport. And the third one will be about making money on the road and or online. So yeah, how can I afford to travel? Let's start with accommodation. Okay, so um, depending on where you're going in the world, i.e. how far you're flying or how far you're going, accommodation is probably going to be your biggest um, expenditure when you travel. So how can you cut down, how can you cut this down, how can you maybe even eliminate this? Luckily we have a few hot tips for you. And the first one is house sitting. So we actually started our travelling by house sitting. It was the only way we could really afford to travel. House sitting is basically almost exactly like babysitting, but for houses and pets instead of babies. So people will go on holiday and they'll leave their pets in the house and they'll let you in. And you look after the house and the pets while they're away. Basically this is a really good way to travel because not only do you get free accommodation oh my god you get to look after some lovely pets if you love animals like we do this is it's a great way to travel you make some furry friends for life other things you get to know the locals you know the people who are going on holiday are obviously people who live in the country you want to go to so they're going to know all the insider tips and where to go and where not to go um you also often get to go to places you wouldn't necessarily have even heard of so we started house sitting in australia obviously we knew what we wanted to go to australia but we didn't really we'd only heard of sydney and melbourne and we actually found house sits in um places that We'd, like I said, we'd never heard of, and that was really cool because, you know, off the beaten track and we got to see Sydney as well, and Melbourne, but also loads of other places. So yeah, house-sitting is a great way to completely eliminate your accommodation costs, and another good thing about it is people know in advance when they're going on holiday, so you can often um, put the houses together in advance, so you can plan a whole year in advance. The only bad thing I'd say about house sitting is if you don't like animals, it's probably not going to be for you. Though you do often find house sits where you uh, don't have an animal. Um, house sits can range in length from just one night to two years, so there's something for everyone. If you're a bit f afraid of going somewhere for a month or whatever, I don't like it, then don't do that one, do a shorter one. Okay, so that was a big ramble about house sitting. To find out more about house sitting, there's some links below and we even have um, a 10% discount for you for our favorite house sitting website. This is the website we've used to found all our sits and um, yeah, it got us nine months in Australia, rent free and also just about a year and a half in Europe, so. The second type of accommodation we, um, recommend for you is Airbnb. Now Airbnb can range from anything to a sofa on someone's couch to a whole flat and it's basically people renting out these spaces to you. So basically Airbnb is where someone has some space, be it a whole house or just a sofa and they're willing to rent it out for you at um, normally a very good price. And another great thing about Airbnb is if you rent the whole place for a week or even a month, it will have a good discount, so that's good. Sometimes the Airbnb, it depends really on the city or even the country, sometimes the Airbnb will be the same, if not more than a hotel, sometimes the hotel will be cheaper. But what we find good about Airbnbs is they almost always come with a kitchen you use. So even if it's the same price as a hotel, you can factor in the fact that you're be eating a few meals in the kitchen, i.e. it'll be cheaper, so, you know. Again, we've got a discount for you guys. We've got £25 off your first day in Airbnb. Again, the link is below, and we hope you enjoy it. The third way to cut accommodation costs is with couch surfing. Now, you might have heard about couch surfing. It's basically where someone has a couch, or even maybe a spare room, and they'll let you stay in it for free. Oh my God and this sounds really great. Personally, we haven't had a lot of success with couch surfing because we find that there are a lot more people who want to couch surf than there are sofas available, if that makes any sense. We've done it three times. The first two times were absolutely amazing. We met some really fun people. They were so lovely and they really added quite a lot of um, greatness to our time in that was in Australia. And it you know, some of our fondest memories. 
The third time we couch surfed, again in Australia, it was not good. The guy was really weird and um, it was mainly our fault because we didn't check the reviews. Anyway, back to why we don't really, we don't really couch surf that often because uh, the kind of rule with couch surfing is that you're going to be there and you're kind of offering them something as well, be it uh, entertainment, maybe you're good with talking and you love people and you're really fun to be around. Maybe you're going to cook them a meal or maybe you can offer them a place when they come to your home country. And personally, because we try travel so much and we work online we don't really it's not really us like we don't want to be sat around talking to strangers which sounds really like and I'm, I'm not really explaining this very well why don't we couch surf more often maybe we should start okay so I, I feel like I should clarify that bit a little more what I basically mean is um, we're working a lot so I, I don't I don't feel it's right to agree to do a couch surf turn up at someone's place and then just sit on a laptop I don't think that's I mean they don't really get anything out of it so um, yeah, don't use the people. If you're really like a social butterfly and you love people, couch surfing will definitely be for you. If you're just looking for a free place to stay, then it's not really for you. So that's, yeah, that's what I meant. <sighs> um, also, even if you don't want to stay with someone with couch surfing, it's always great to go to the couch surfing um, meetup so you can meet other travellers and or, um, you know, get some more inside tips. So, yeah. Okay, so the fourth one we recommend is, of course, hotels. We actually, in the last year, have come to really love hotels and um, especially if we've been traveling for a long time and kind of maybe had like a bit of a rough time, it's always nice to stay somewhere really nice and or if it's someone's like birthday or anniversary or blah, blah, blah. Um, you can still find cheap hotels or you can find your favorite hotel for cheaper because there are a lot of comparison websites out there. You've probably heard of Agoda, Hotels.com, what are the other ones? Uh, booking.com but maybe you haven't heard that you can actually book through TripAdvisor now which I didn't know but I know now just recently anyway so um, we've got links to all four of those below and a couple of others and you can just they're really great because you can put them hotels and you can put it price order or recommended order so you can have the cheapest at the top or the most expensive at the top yeah basically we love staying in hotels so um, one of the things we recommend with hotels is to always read the reviews and take some of the reviews with a pinch of salt. So I've seen two star reviews and then read it and it's like the reception was really rude to me. And I'm thinking, you know, if it's two stars, I want to hear that there were bed bugs and there was a fire in your room, you know. But, you know, if all the all of the reviews are bad, don't go for that one. If most of them are good, obviously go for that one. It's, it's kind of common sense. But I always make sure I read it more than one. Don't Don't just read the top one. Um, but yeah, all those websites I mentioned are great because they all have good reviews. Or they all have reviews even, I don't know if the reviews are good. Um, from people who've actually stayed there. So yeah, top tip. Okay, so another option that will completely cut your accommodation costs to zero is work away or woofing. Basically volunteering sites where you can go and you stay in someone's house for free, you get food for free. Oh my god but you do have to do a little bit of work for them. Oh. Now, personally, we've never tried uh, work away or woofing or really any volunteering because we, we're just not very good at manual labor. But it, you know, if it's something, if there's like a skill you want to learn, so for example, maybe you want to have a farm of your own or maybe you want to learn how to build a ship or I don't know, some kind of hands-on manual labor type, type project, you can almost definitely find one of those and you get to stay for free, you get your food for free and you get to learn a, a skill so and a skill that you wanted to learn so I think I think it can be really good if you like manual labour which we don't so <laughs> so another one which is similar to work away woofing volunteering is au pairing and you I'm pretty sure you know what this is but in case you don't it's looking after other people's children again you get your accommodation for free you get your food for free and I think I'm pretty sure you get paid too I don't think you get paid a lot, but you do get paid. Again, this is something we've never done, partly because we travel as a couple, and I don't even know you can au pair as a couple. And partly because we don't really like children. I mean, we like some children, but not enough to, to live with them. But if you love children, if you want to stay somewhere particularly in one place for you know maybe six months or a year it's more for long-term things you can't really au pair just for the weekend again as far as I know um yeah this could be great for you or if yeah if you love children if you want to work with children if you want to have children I would recommend au pairing 
Okay, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found something useful from this video. If you have, comment below and let us know so it's always good to hear um, positive feedback. Yeah, <laughs> give this video a like if you um, feel you liked it. All the links to everything we mentioned are below and if you have any questions, drop us a line. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Snapchat, we're on Twitter, we're on Pinterest, we have an email address, we have a website. Um, plenty of ways to get in contact and say, Hey ya! Thank you for watching. Okay, and tune in for tomorrow to see part two, which will be all about transport and how to save a few bucks on transport. But subscribe so you don't miss it. See you tomorrow.